Welcome back to the Bitcoin layer. I'm Joe Consorti. So Bitcoin did not break above $80,000. Uh, the setup and market structure were there, but the momentum to put push Bitcoin above this three month descending channel that you see right here did not end up coming to fruition. Uh, so today we're going to take a look at Bitcoin native activity. We're going to take a look at this very candlestick chart right here. We're going to take a look at the ETFs and also some on chain data uh, to give us some indication of where key support levels are, what levels we might bounce off of, and what we need to actually continue this bull market. Uh, so we'll talk about all that in today's video. But first, a word from our sponsor, River. Um, River, you guys know there are Bitcoin exchange of choice. Uh, you can securely buy Bitcoin with zero fees on recurring orders. Uh, you get a peace of mind thanks to their one-to-one, -one full reserve, multi-sig, cold storage custody, maximum best-in-class security solution. Uh, and you can withdraw at any time. And if you need help, they also have US-based phone support for all clients. And they also launched a new feature a couple months back called Riverlink that lets you send Bitcoin over a text message that can be claimed to any wallet. So you can give a gift, pay a friend for dinner, or orange pill your friends completely hassle-free. Guys, River is our Bitcoin exchange of choice. They are changing the game. Use river.com slash TBL to get up to $100 when you sign up and buy Bitcoin. Uh, that is river.com slash TBL to claim that special offer of getting up to $100 uh, when you sign up and buy Bitcoin. All right, so diving into the charts here, the first chart that I have right here, we'll actually get into this in just a moment. First, we're going to talk about ETF holdings. So the biggest story of the last three months, undoubtedly, uh, you know, in 2024 was the introduction of these spot Bitcoin ETFs. OK, the market was clamoring them for so long. Um, the biggest story of the first three months of 2024 was the introduction so over here and the tsunami of inflows into this suite of nine new spot Bitcoin ETFs with the ugly duckling being GBTC that saw 50% of its Bitcoin holdings migrate to one of the newer, cheaper, more reputable vehicles. Okay. Uh, but you'll see here since early March. Okay. So about this time frame, and this is XGBTC, um, flows have basically been flat. So we had this huge tsunami of inflows. ETF holdings in dollar terms have been largely flat, okay, ranging between um, 47 over here. This is all of the flows. So they've kind of been flat since early March, ranging between uh, 47 billion and uh, this uh, 62 billion for three and a half months is just kind of where we, we've hung out. So because of that, the ETFs haven't really served as a tailwind to push Bitcoin's price higher, okay? Uh, so in terms of all of these ETFs, GBTC has fallen to second place. I've removed it from this chart. Um, and BlackRock's IBIT offering has kind of taken the lead. Really, it was only a matter of time until this happened because BlackRock's size and institutional reputability, um, it was you know it was bound to draw capital out of GBTC, which is younger, less reputable, and has higher fees. And Fidelity is now in third place. Um, it's also likely to overtake GBTC at some point. So they now have a combined 477,000 Bitcoin, uh, which is worth 31.4 billion. You can see on this chart, the white and the blue combined. Uh, on behalf of their spot Bitcoin ETF client. So here's a chart of each vehicle, excluding GBTC. Um, BlackRock is in white, Fidelity is in blue, and the total spot uh, Bitcoin ETF holdings in dollar terms are right here. So clearly, I mean, one of the things we've seen is that these ETFs haven't been a huge uh, boon for Bitcoin's price. Of course they were here, but now that flows are, uh, relatively speaking, flat, the assets under management here are flat, all things considered, in dollar terms, um, it begs the question, like what other catalysts could we see that could push Bitcoin's price up? Well, let's take a look at candlesticks, okay? So these are four hour candles. Uh, and we can see where Bitcoin's attempted break above the low $70,000 zone failed. Uh, two weeks ago, I wrote about Bitcoin raring to break out. I made a video about Bitcoin raring to break out. A lot of you guys saw that video. And Bitcoin was at the very top of this descending channel, okay? When I made that video, Bitcoin was entering the channel right here. It went up to the top, failed, went up again. Now it broke down below. Um, it was really ready to attempt to break out if it could gather the momentum behind it, but it didn't gather the momentum behind it. How come? Well, one of the reasons is that the market was and still is very delta neutral. So it's very directionally neutral in both the spot and the CME futures market, as well as the perpetual futures and options market. Um, I thought that Bitcoin would have the legs underneath it for a sustained rally. But the reality is it needed momentum in order to get there. OK, so with a delta neutral market, um, that means there's very little froth. But as it turns out, in order to get that initial momentum, that initial pop, we needed a little bit more froth than was in the market at the time. So instead of basically what this means and where we currently are with the market is instead of a ton of long or short directional leverage, um, we have directionally neutral liquidity, which is the dominant force in the market. 
which means that a sudden rally or a sudden sell-off aren't really in play. That's why since then, you've kind of just seen this stair-stepping pattern instead of this, you know, eye-watering, huge rally, huge sell-off, huge rally, huge sell-off, rally, sell-off. You've seen this kind of very milquetoast stair-steppiness because there isn't a lot of directional liquidity in the market. Um, unfortunately, because of this froth, what that also meant is that Bitcoin simply couldn't gather enough direct directional momentum to break out. Now Bitcoin is just stair-stepping down as it tries to find support and regain its footing. And where can we find support? As you can see here, we're at $64,500. Uh, if we break below $64,000, um, the next area of consolidation uh, being formed uh, was formed during April and May, which is around like fifty-seven dollars to $60,000 down here. And then the short-term holder realized price. Uh, so what is the short-term holder realized price? Well, let's talk about it. I'm going to switch up the board here over to Glassnode. They're going to have an on-chain 101. So uh, this is the next area of support. And it's the next area of support for a very key reason. And we're just hovering over it right now. Now, we are less than $600 above the short-term holder realized price. So what is this? What does this mean? Well, uh, short-term holder realized price, or STHRP, that's what we'll call it just for the remainder of the video, uh, is the average purchase price of Bitcoiners who don't stay in the market very long, which is typical of bull markets. And it's a good historical floor for bull markets for that very reason. Why? Well, the short-term holder realized price is in red here, just so you know. I'm actually going to take off the other line here, just so you have the price in black and the short-term holder realized price in red. Okay. So black is price, red is S STHRP. Okay. Why does this serve as a floor during bull markets? Well, if you were only in the market because of crazy price action, and then the price dropped below your entry point, you'd panic sell. That's the exact type of behavior we, observed, we have observed time and time again in Bitcoin bull markets. And it's the exact reason why this area is so hotly defended once we approach it. Okay, so short-term holders use their average purchase price as a buying zone, and then they defend that entry point so they don't have to sell at a loss. Okay, so this causes short-term holder realized price to serve as a floor during bull market corrections. And it makes sense. If you were a fair-weather Bitcoiner, you just entered the market because the price was going up, Around the time that you reach your entry point, let's say you bought it, you know, 55,000. In this case, it's uh, it's uh, 60, 64, roughly. So let's say you bought Bitcoin at 64,000. It goes up to 72. All of a sudden, you're coming back close to 64,000. You would buy some more Bitcoin because you don't want to be in a loss. And so you do your part to defend your entry point. Um, you know, and that's why price bounces off short-term holder realized price and the bull market continues. Um, look at Bitcoin's price in black and the short-term holder realized price in red. Every time the price dips down to the red line, uh, it quickly bounces off of it, okay? So you see here, um, bounce, bounce, right? Bounce, um, until what happens over here, right? So, so short-term holders realized price acts as a floor. It acted as a floor over here during the entire 2017 bull market. And again, over here, it acted as a floor as well. So bounce, uh, bounce, and then, uh, of course, it breaks underneath it. Bounce again right here. And it has acted as a floor several times during this bull market. Bounce, bounce, break underneath it very briefly, came back up, bounce, bounce, and now we're approaching it once again, okay? So essentially, every time the price dips down to the red line and quickly bounces off of it or just underneath it, remember, that's because short-term realized price, short-term model realized price, HTHRP, acts as a floor because it's where bull market participants defend their entry points. That's why during a bull market, price bounces off STHRP and the bull market continues. But when the price in black breaks below STHRP in red and can't go back above it, that marks the end of the uptrend and the start of a downtrend. Okay, so look at January 2018. Price broke, oh my goodness, hold on, let me zoom back out here, whoopsies. So price broke, price broke down below STHRP, you can see here, and it tried to go back above it. It couldn't try to go back above it. It couldn't. Now, these areas are marked in blue. When price dips below short-term holder realized price and can't get back above it, these areas are marked in blue, okay? So when that happens and it can't reverse it, then that marks the end of the uptrend and the start of a downtrend. So look at January 2018. As you can see here, the start of the downtrend. Very bad downtrend. All the way from uh, $20,000 all the way down to it's low of uh, three thousand, uh, yeah, th 3,200 bucks, okay? So, and this was all marked and confirmed basically by when Bitcoin's price fell below STHRP. It fell below the bull market Bitcoiners average purchase price. 
Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the end of the, and it also happened in 2022, okay? So it happened here in January, uh, December of 2021, rather, January of 2022, to mark the end of the last bull market as well. Uh, that's not to say that this occurrence always marks the end of a bull market. It could just mark the uh, uh, beginning of a tiny downtrend. So for example here, it didn't. this didn't mark the end of the, the bull market that began at the bottom formed here in uh late 2018, uh, it just marked a multi-month correction, right? So when this happened, uh, when price stepped below STHRP right here, it marked that there was a, um, a three-month long correction, okay? From early October to early January, that's what this marked. And then we were kind of back off to the races. Had not been for COVID, we, we'd still go up here without this. But the point being, sometimes it marks the end of a bull market. Sometimes it marks a downtrend that will only last several weeks. But the reality is, if we get an extended period where price falls below short-term holder realized price, then you end up getting a downtrend confirmation, okay? Um, no longer an uptrend, it breaks the uptrend, you start seeing a downtrend. Um, and so where are we right now? Well, let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in, let's say to right here, roughly speaking, over the last uh, two years, roughly, and some change. So Bitcoin's price is now at $65,000. Well, it's, you know, right now it's at uh, 64,500. So it's been falling. And again, it's been stair-stepping on its way down. And short-term holder realized price is at 63,700 at the time of uh, me making this video. So should Bitcoin break down below this level? And you can see it already bounced off of it uh, in April, right? It already tried to go beneath it. It bounced off of it, bounced here, fell underneath this for a little bit here, bounce, bounce. So clearly, it's it's this this historical trend of STHRP serving as a floor has been intact, but should Bitcoin break below sixty four thousand dollars and below STHRP, it would mark the start of a multi week mini downtrend like we witnessed in September twenty nineteen and July twenty twenty one, which is a you know a mid bull market correction that's slightly bigger than usual. Uh, here at TBL and me personally, in weighing the balance of risks, we should also note that a sustained break below STHRP as much as we hate to say it, could mark the start of a bear. That's not our base case though, okay? With weakness becoming apparent at the surface of the US labor market and maintenance cuts coming soon after, any marginal slowdown in US economic activity will be bullish for risk assets, Bitcoin included, okay? That's how we view the rest of this year playing out. But we look to Bitcoin's approach toward STHRP right here. They're very close to one another, now only $800 apart, $500 apart rather, we, we look to Bitcoin's approach toward SHRP for a bounce cleanly off the level, if not slightly underneath, like we've observed throughout the bull market so far. If we don't get that and Bitcoin can't regain its footing, we next look to some selling brought on by bull market participants having to cut their losses, these short-term holders capitulating, um, with support levels to be found at 60,000, right, right down here, and unfortunately below that, 50,000, if the selling isn't overtaking by buying at that point. So... That is everything. That's your little explainer on what exactly short-term holder realized price is and why it serves as a floor during Bitcoin bull markets. And why, although we weren't able to break above 80K, it looks like we are uh, going to bounce off of this next level that we see. And if we don't, and if we see a sustained break below, and then it could mark the start of a multi-week or even multi-month downtrend. But again, here at TBL, that's not our base case. Uh, again, thanks so much to River for sponsoring this video. River is our Bitcoin exchange of choice. Um, you can go to river.com uh, to securely buy Bitcoin with zero fees on recurring orders, which is how you get the best return on your Bitcoin. You're going to have peace of mind thanks to their full one-to-one, -one, fully reserved uh, multi-sig cold storage custody, and you can withdraw at any time. If you need help, they have US-based phone support for all clients, and you can text Bitcoin to a friend, uh, to a family member. Uh, and you could orange pill completely new Bitcoiners, totally hassle-free, text Bitcoin over a link that can be claimed to any wallet. Really cool stuff. Again, guys, invest in Bitcoin with confidence at River. Go to river.com slash TBL for our special promo code. Get up to $100 when you sign up and buy Bitcoin. That's river.com slash TBL to claim that code. Again, thanks so much for watching. Make sure uh, that you hit like, you hit subscribe, and you hit the bell notification icon so you can get notified when we always upload a new video. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take it easy.